And I'll ask those that are here in interest on 84 Atlas to please come up and have a seat along this side of the horseshoe. Before we begin, I'll, I'll ask those that are here in interest, uh, how many among you would uh, like to speak to the committee? Very good. I'm seeing two people. So uh, at, if we remain at two people, um, you can each have five minutes to address committee. Good. Applicant for 84 Atlas? Uh, yes. Yes. May I ask your name and address, please? Uh, Michael Monier at 84 Atlas Avenue. Thank you very much. Okay, on this application, the committee has before it the materials submitted by the applicant. And we have um, some uh, correspondence in opposition from 2 Dundurn and 82 Atlas Avenue, and plus some more recently, some recently received supplementary materials. So... Um, I think we should go ahead with a, a brief presentation on your okay. I'll, uh, on I'll your application, please. I'll start here and then I'll move back to the. Uh, That'd be fine. Okay. So um, I've been a homeowner for uh, six and a half years at the property. All the work that's been done on the property has always been permitted. Uh, you know, kitchen, basement to renovation, a pool, and a garage. Um, the reason we're here before you here is. Um, during the construction of the garage, the inspector had some issues with the 50% um, existing walls that had to be maintained. So I'll go back here. Um, okay. Okay, we're ready to. Uh, One moment, please. Okay. Just a moment, please. scrolling did this this is I have no idea Oh. 
just tapped it, and it was like all of a sudden it just had turned itself off. Mm. Okay, I don't know. Do you want to? Okay, Okay. get started now, please. Go ahead, sir. Um, as I was saying, um, all the work that we do on the property has always been permitted. Uh, the last series of permits that we obtained were for the pool, swimming pool, and the garage. The uh, garage was supposed to be um, um, repair or renovation or incorporating the existing garage into a new structure. The uh, building code or zoning code requires you to keep 50% of the existing walls and you can uh, improve the garage from there. In the, uh, during the inspection, the uh, inspector found that the bottom plate of one of the walls was cut and he felt that that uh, no longer kept the uh, non-conforming, whatever, the existing wall condition. And for that reason that uh, we're here before committee to um, seek permission to get um, the existing garage um, reapproved. So um, one of the limitations that we have is the, is the pool. The, um, the lot is fairly narrow. So if you start at the property line, we need four feet um, for the pool, side yard. The pool's eight feet, four feet, and then the remaining garage. Um, the garage currently, well, let me just, this is what the existing garage look like. And this is the uh, current garage that uh, has been built and that the uh, inspector had issues with the plate. The garage occupies the same square foot, same area, same footprint as the existing garage. Uh, it's a little bit higher, but well below what is permitted by the zoning code. The uh, zoning code permits a four meter high garage. Our height is actually 3.65. And towards the back property, uh, the back of the, of the structure, we actually stepped it down to 3.1 meters which is a step down of three feet to our um, adjoining property. So, um, so if we just kind of go over what the zoning modifications were, that we're asking for. Uh, the first one was for landscaping to uh, increase the hardscape. Um, currently, let's see. Uh, currently, um, all the area around the pool is landscaped, so we're just asking for a little bit of relief to have some additional hardscape. So now when we step off our deck, uh, as you step down, uh, we step onto grass, we're just asking for some additional um, hardscape area. Um, for the item number two, for the side yard. Um, since, the, since the pool is constructed, we're unable to move um, the garage over. And the intent was to um, use the existing structure, you know, to comply. But somehow during construction, um, you know, things go awry. And, you know, we took objection with the uh, inspector's comments, but we're unable to um, persuade anyone at building and safety. And they required us to come to committee of adjustments. So then for items three and four, they all relate to um, a non-conforming parking space. And this has to do with uh, the parking, the existing parking space in the garage. So we're just asking uh, to maintain that. And I think those are, and then the, the last condition, I guess, is just a repeat from a different bylaw on the uh, parking lot side. So, um, I don't know if you want, I can address um, uh, the, the neighbor's comments now or later. No, no, we'll hear the neighbor's comments first. Okay. I'll just ask you one question about the uh, parking space. So the, the old garage was also deficient. Yes. It, 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 this is an existing garage parking space deficiency issue. 
Correct. We're asking for the exact same, like it's, it was what it was. That's the new garage is not larger than the old one. No, it's exactly the same size. And that's the non-conforming. The parking size we're asking for was what was there. Very good. Okay, if you'd leave that drawing up, please, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Just leave it up. And um, so now we can move on to the speakers that are here in interest. Who'd like to go first? Very good. If you'd come up to the podium, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Regina Kurth. My husband, Christian Jambor, and I own two Dundurn Crescent, uh, which is backing on to Mr. Monier's property. Uh, he's one of several lots that back onto our property. My main concern, as you've probably read in my letter, has to do with a tree that was not acknowledged in the application. The, it, the application asks the question, is the property subject to the private tree bylaw? And Mr. Monier said no. And in fact, this is incorrect, having informed myself. And I assumed when Mr. Monier started doing the work that he was doing everything under permits and with permission because he told us he was an architect and I figured he would know what the issues were that had to be considered. So the tree largely sits on our property and I can show you a photo. Please. That's the tree from our side. And the fence has been cut open to allow part of the trunk of the tree to grow through into his property. So there's the bottom of the trunk that goes over right here. That's the trunk of the tree that is on his side of the property line. So it straddles the lot. And the cement you see directly behind is the cement that was poured to accommodate the fence around the pool on his side of the property. And to the right, the wall that you see, that gap is about 15 inches. The wall to the right is the back wall of the garage, which is unfinished currently. So the tree at the base is about five feet in diameter. We believe it to be an uh, alder buckthorn. And it's higher than our house, so about 25 to 30 feet, and definitely should have been taken into consideration. When you look at the site plan, when you look at the drawings, the survey, nowhere is there any indication that there is a tree there. So I'm sure that there are no permits in place that um, where somebody from urban forestry came out and took a look. We didn't realize this until we received the package about the hearing today, and then I looked at the file, and I saw that the, this was an omission, and that it was an actual incorrect statement about the fact that there is a tree that should have been taken into account in all of this. Furthermore, the diagram that you have in the package on A08 shows that the roof now has two flat basins, where before the roof line was um, a gable roof. So the water at that time was able to run off, whereas now it's caught. Here it is, I beg your pardon. So this is the top of the roof currently of the garage that has been built. And at the very back in the corner, you can see it just in where the branches of the tree are. There's a scupper, and he shows it as well in, in his drawings. That, to my understanding, is the only place where water now runs off, and it runs into that little 15-inch trench that you saw in my first photo. So. I don't know what damage was done to the tree roots when the pool was dug, but the canopy of this tree is large enough that certainly where the digging took place, it would have affected the root system. And I don't know what long-term damage there may be from the lack of water that is coming through from what it was previously. 
My concern, our concern, is that the damage may not show up right away. It may deteriorate over a period of time, this tree. And if, as a result, at some point in the future, the tree uh, causes damage to, because a limb drops or something is, <laughs> it causes some damage either to the garage or to our neighboring properties, we would be held responsible, even though we didn't cause that damage. That tree is a very mature tree. We have maintained it uh, over the years. I've been there since 1998. I've owned the property 22 years. And I have contacted Urban Forestry since I received this file and left a message, but I have not heard anything back from them yet. I understand that they're quite short-staffed and busy, but uh, that's why we are here. The only other concern is simply that the garage is much larger than what was there before. For us, it's simply a visual issue, as apart from all the issues that I mentioned around the tree and, and the effects that it has. Thank you. Um, so it's a flat roof. Oh. Pardon me. So the roof is flat roof now, and before it was a gabled roof. It was a gabled roof, and you have that in your package, actually. Uh, on okay. Okay, no, that's fine. No, A O one. Very good. Okay. The other question I wanted to ask you was, uh, or the other thing I wanted to comment was, um, you have you say you have contacted Urban Forestry. And that's the correct. I've left a message. That's a, well. That's the correct thing to do. Follow it up because this this panel doesn't have. Uh, uh, um, authority over, over the tree issue, urban forestry does. So they're the ones that are going to need to be made aware of your concern. Um, I guess my concern um, was that the application was actually incorrect because he said that this, this renovation that he was planning or the work he was planning was not subject to the private tree yeah. bylaw. He said no, and in fact it is. I hear you. And that's why I think it was kind of a misrepresentation given what, as an architect, he should have known was required. You've done the right thing to contact urban forestry on that issue, and they can determine whether the tree is at risk and so on. Um, very good. Thank you very much. Thank for you for your, your presentation. time. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any members? Um, I do have copies of the letter I want to review with you. Okay, so uh, my name is Luminata Garofalo. I am the daughter of uh, Giuseppe and Maria Casuscelli, um, which are my parents. They asked me um, to talk on behalf for them. They are the owners. And where do of, they live? They're the owners of 82 Atlas Avenue. Um, they've been the uh, owners of 82 Atlas Avenue for over 47 years. Um, they're the immediate neighbors south of the property in question. Right now, the property uh, is a rented property, so my parents rent it out. Um, in use for livelihood because they're retired. Um, I'd like to start off by um, asking why was the existing garage that was to be maintained as per the approved permit drawing from the city demolished and rebuilt? Um, I'm questioning if the owner or the architect uh, knew of the existing walls that were not adequate. Why was this uh, new garage that was proposed at the end had to be demolished? Like, why did they demolish these walls? Um, also, I wanted to ask you, uh, if you apply for a building permit as a renovation, do the same zoning bylaws apply? I'm not an expert in this, and I'll leave it up to you and your colleagues to comment on this. Um, Repeat that, please. It's in my letter, if you see. Um, look, I'm, I'm asking if a building permit as a renovation, like, do you need one, right? Do the same zoning bylaws apply? I, I'm not an expert, and I'd like you to comment it if you want, please, later. Um, this new building structure, I don't know if it triggered, um, was it triggered by the, the garage or not, but I do think it did trigger some of the variances that he is requesting, okay? 
My, our main concern in our family is uh, variance number two. Um, he is asking that he, we have a setback of 0 0.03 meters. I strongly believe that 0 0.3 meter setback is to be maintained. Um, in our opinion, it isn't a minor variance. A minor variance would be from 0 0.3 to 0 0.25. That would be a, a, a minor variance. In this, in this case, the setback is completely eliminated. So we don't agree with that at all. Um, the applicant not only demolished the garage, but he rebuilt the structure without a permit, and now he's asking us for a variance that affects our property. Like, how is this supposed to better my parents' property? I, I don't understand. Um, this variance also affects our future plans. We'd like to build a garage one day in our property, but this is going to affect because if we don't have that 0 0.3 meters, do we have to pull ourselves more into our property to have that gauge way to, to go and, and get through the two garages if something needs to be repaired or what have you? Right now, if you do give him the 0, 0.0 meter uh, variance that he's requesting, then if he has any repairs or anything to do, he has to come onto our property as well. So that's another uh, issue that we, we don't uh, agree with. Um, Furthermore, the applicant built a fence on his property in conjunction to the garage. I know it's, it's understood that the fence is not part of the requested variance, but it is an unresolved issue between uh, both parties concerned here today. We tried to resolve it, and there is no talking to him right now about this. Um, the position of the fence makes it close to impossible to access our parking space and our parking spot in the back. And a downtown Toronto house without a proper parking space is very inconvenient and depreciates the value of our property. Usually a family now, an average family now has two vehicles. We should have access to our property in the back if we'd like to park in our parking spot in the back. Furthermore, this fence, uh, this fence the way it's built, it has a cement underneath that now water will uh, sift through into our property. So these are all the concerns of my parents asked me to address. I do have pictures I want to show you about the fence, the old garage. The fence that's built, uh, being built to, there. I'll ask you to make your summary quite rapidly, please. Okay, so that's the beginning of building the fence. There's a cement at the bottom, and my dad's concerned about the water coming into our property, as well as us not having parking um, the infringement of the parking into our back space. Up top, up top there was the, uh, the old garage, which yeah. has been demolished. Yeah. Was, uh, so it was tied up to the, to the property line. Accessibility to the backyard. We don't have accessibility to the backyard. It's very tight to get back there right now to park in the back. I don't, I don't know if it's too not quite visible here, but it's very, very difficult to make a, a proper turn with a your larger vehicles. To the left. That's your parking spot on yeah. the left hand side. Yes, yes, very, very difficult. So, uh, yes, it's on his property line. Um, we don't want to infringe on anything he's doing, but we don't want to depreciate the value of our home either. There's parking. We shouldn't be parking on a street because he's decided to do what he wanted to do on his property. Okay. Um, do I have any more time or no? I guess, well, you, we're yeah. going to ask you some questions now. No, you, you are you are out of your time now. But I'll open this to questions from my colleagues on the panel. My question is um, that red that red uh, upright board in the middle is that is that a fence in front of the garage or is that the front of the garage? No, that's the fence. <laughs> well, so the fence comes out, which makes yes. the turn a problem. Yeah, yes. It's, it's really difficult, especially in winter months when there's ice back there. Like, you're really going to land in his property trying to turn. And how far does that fence come out? About six feet or something? I'm not sure about the proper measurements. I'm sorry. Well, Chris, so the impact that you're seeing on you is that it's going to impede any thought of building a future garage, potentially. And uh, Well, yeah, because if we put a garage back there, we actually want to use it and put a vehicle in it. So what? yes, you can use it for storage, but we want it for vehicle. Right now, the house is a rental property, and we want the people who are renting the house to have the accessibility to go to the back to park. Otherwise, they're going to have to get a permanent park on the okay. on the road. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. 
All right then, thank you to both speakers. We'll now ask the applicant to return to the podium. Or, or, or you can work from there if you like. Um, to oh, I'm sorry, did you wish to speak also? Sir, if you'd like to speak, you may. Um, but we need to go up to the podium. So, let me just understand here. Do you, sir, wish to speak, and you? No, no. Okay, but, but you'd like to speak. I really want to ask a question, but I'll go up there. You should go to the podium, please. So, my name is George Tambury, and, and, and I, I, my house is 86 houses. It's on the other side of, of the opposition, so we have Michael in the middle, right? The, so, the, the question I have is, uh, probably, I don't even know if legitimate to ask you guys, but his garage, when he built his garage, whether he built it with a permit or not, it's not, not my concern either, but he had to leave a wall, but he, he's built his garage now, he left one wall, he left the, the sort of the, the, north, uh, the south wall of the garage, and now has become the north wall. So, in other, in other words, the structure of the garage is not where it used to be. The garage is, is not it, where it used to be? No, no. If, if, we, if, if you'd like to put that drawing back, there's pictures to support that. So if you look at the picture, the garage that you see now, the new garage, used to be close to my, my garage. My gra I'm, I'm, it shows it a little bit of my garage. That's where the garage used to be, further to this side. He left the left wall. How do I Show explain it this? There. Show it on there. It's just a question. This is the existing garage. The garage used to be this way, right? The garage was on the other side of the lot. Used to be that way, so he left this wall, right? So that's no, that's. A, like, I thought the pool was there. Uh, no, is, is, isn't the so pool yeah, there? The garage, basically, the garage was where the pool is. So I, I'm wondering, is this is this the right thing to do? Because that that would have made no problems for nobody. Not I, it's not making me a problem, anyways. But now I'm the tree and. Right. And the adjacent property that's uh, opposing and all that. that, that that's, such a, that's all I wanted to know, if you could answer that question. Well, I'm going to ask the applicant to answer the question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Allow for the question. Speak. All right. Sweet. Yeah, sorry. Okay, applicant, um, if you could read the questions I want you to, to look at here. Um, um, this is an important question just raised. The siting of the garage. I thought the garage was on basically on the same site as before, but I understand the garage has moved. That is uh, incorrect. Just a second. That is, um, that is incorrect. Just a second. Okay. I'm going to summarize what I've heard from the speakers that spoke. Um, there is concern about a tree that is potentially at risk. I'll ask you just to comment on that. Um, I want you to tell me when the pool was dug, please. And uh, and um, also noted was this concern by the neighbors that the siting of your garage impedes their future ability to build on their property. Those are the questions to address. Um, uh, first one uh, regarding the tree. The g existing garage sat on top of the tree, and what I built is exactly on the same footprint. So there's no change to the condition of the tree or any obstructions that occurred to it. The pool, actually the, um, the slope of the property from the front to the back is about a four foot drop, four and a half foot drop. The pool in the back is actually sticks up above grade four feet. So when it wasn't excavated down, it's actually raised up. The pool towards the house is actually uh, level with the grade and the pool at the back is above grade. So there was no excavation down. Um, let's see. The, um, George is incorrect. The, the garage is exactly where it's located. You can see that from the pictures. You know, that, that's, that's right on the property line. And it's right at the back of the house in the um, southwest corner. So I'm not sure where that comment's coming from. Um, a permit was obtained to rebuild this, uh, to repair and rebuild this garage and maintain its existing walls. 
Unfortunately, the framer cut the bottom plate. This wasn't the case, we wouldn't be here. Um, oh, here's a picture. So what the inspector is uh, objecting to is this bottom plate that the framer put a new plate underneath and didn't, um, uh, if that bottom plate wasn't installed, he wouldn't have had any issues. And the back wall, uh, here's the back wall. This is the back wall of the garage. You can see the dark wood is the existing uh, garage wall. And he had no issues with uh, that wall. Let me just bring this back. Um, so that's the existing wall that we're maintaining. And uh, the sill plate was cut. Um, so that's he was objecting to. So just to say that, and also with such a narrow site, uh, with such a narrow site, we're unable to move the garage over just because the pool requires four feet on either side for safety and per the zoning bylaw, that we'd be unable to move it over. The garage is in exactly the same place, slightly higher, well below the... Um, zoning requirements. The permits were obtained for all the work uh, on the site. And if I could just address the parking or the turning. Right here is, so here's the garage and over here is the fence. Here is the, I guess, the property line post. The city requires, you can see the dotted line, that is the required clear area that no structure should be built, which is 2.4 meters. Their house is actually 3.6 meters from the pin. And the driveway is 2.1 meters wide. They have ample space to get in there. And there's, um, there's nothing in the zoning bylaw that talks about turning radiuses and access beyond this dotted line. So, um, um, you know, considering it's existing garage, if, if it wasn't for some errors in construction, we wouldn't be here today. And I think people are trying to take advantage of the situation and ask for some additional um, items. Excuse me, no uppers, please. No uppers, please. And any other questions? Oh, there may be the scupper, questions. The scupper in the back. Is the work is incomplete, and a scupper will be added, a down leader, water down leader, to pull the water away from that area. Any questions from panel members? No? I, I do have one. I, I want to go through this process carefully. Um, so you obtained a permit to, uh, to basically rebuild the garage. Uh, Correct. A, re a rebuild re and refurbish. Correct. Then the inspector discovered this plate issue. Correct. And did the inspector advise you you needed a new permit? And, and did you get a new permit in order to demolish uh, No, he bill? said um, uh, the new permit would, you know, trigger the Committee of Adjustments because it's, uh, he's considering it a new structure now. So they're saying... So you're coming to us? Yeah. Saying... In order to get a new permit? Uh, correct. He's saying that... Um, um, if it's considered a new structure, you, these are the uh, requirements for setbacks and parking. Thank you. Okay. okay. There are no further questions of my hey, members. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, we've, we've been through that now. No, we've, we had the applicant speak, then we had speakers, and the applicant made his rebuttal to the issues raised by speakers. And at this stage, we are taking the issue into committee. So we will proceed without interruptions or outbursts, please. The matter is now before the committee. And uh, read thoughts on this? I think this is a difficult one. Um, particularly because a bunch of the issues aren't really uh, in in our review, 
But I, I think the one thing that's guiding me now is the, the zero lot line, right? That, that it was there before and it's being rebuilt there again. And I know there are this fence and it's, it's tight. Um, but for me, the fact that yeah, whether the construction, I'm not getting into the making opinions on what happened and why during the construction. But um, for me, the, the main thing is that, that lot line and, and the relationship. The fact that it was zero before and zero now is, that's a, a key element to me. Yeah. I think if I was them, I would continue to try and get in touch with urban forestry to see what they can do about that tree. Um, there may be something they could do to preserve it or add to its health or something that they could do. Uh, outside of our jurisdiction right at the moment, but that would be my recommendation. Thoughts on the, uh, on, on the actual application? Um, it sounds to me like they got started and wanted to use the existing walls and then got caught out because it, they, um, they went beyond what they could do without it triggering new variances. Um, and, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I do agree with um, the zero lot line um, thoughts as well. Thank you. Uh, my thoughts on this would be that, first of all, I need to advise everybody that the Committee of Adjustment is not a punitive board or a punitive body. Um, we look at these applications when it's a question of legalizing something already built. We have to look at it from this point of view. Would we have permitted this construction um, if it hadn't been done yet? In other words, if the applicant had come to us with their application and it wasn't built, that's the, the, the framework by which we must consider these applications. Would we have said yes or no? Um, in this case, the fact that the previously built garage did come up tight to the lot line, was, was zero setback, um, also uh, is key to me. Um, had a new application come up that, that sought to replicate that. I think as I've seen this, I probably would have been inclined to, to approve it. Um, so in terms of the, four, the tree issues around, the, uh, the tree that could be at risk, beyond the purview of this committee. We, we simply don't have the authority to address that. You've done the right thing by addressing urban forest. Um, so um, those are my thoughts on it. And uh, unless there are further comments, I'll look to the panel to, uh, to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve um, based on our comments. Motion to approve by Ms. Larson. Is there a second? I'll second that. Se second by Mr. Reed. All in favor? The application is approved as it stands. Good luck. And with the committee moves on at this stage to 77 Eaton Avenue. If the uh, applicant could come forward to the podium and those here in interest could come forward, please, to occupy these chairs along the side of the horseshoe. Okay. 
Has everyone come forward who is here in interest on this application? Would you care, would you like to speak to the application? Good. Okay. You'll have five minutes to do so. And uh, at this point, I will ask the applicant to give us your name and address, please. Hi, uh, Martin Skears, 77 Eaton Avenue. Barbara Bradley, 77 Eaton Avenue. Thank you very much. Just before we begin, let me advise you what materials the committee has before it with respect to this application. There are the materials submitted by the applicant. There's a covering letter from Barbara Bradley and Martin Sears uh, with renderings, photographs, site plan proposed. There's a previous Committee of Adjustment decision. And there is a justification letter from Barbara Bradley, received 20 Jan, um, with renderings, photographs, and drawings showing the proposed site plan. In opposition, we do have correspondence from Monica Peters, solicitor, on behalf of the owners or occupants of 75 Eaton, which I take it is the house next door, received January 21. And we have some supplementary materials. Uh, extensive photo file as well. So, um, to the applicant, now you, you have five minutes, if you would, to make your presentation with respect to the application, please. So, um, good afternoon, committee. Good afternoon. Uh, we're here, of course, uh, to request an altercation. Uh, alteration sorry to our existing building permit it's already been approved by uh, the city of course uh, back in September 2018 um, we have uh, two variances of course two minor variances uh, ones to extend the upper rear floor to be fully over the approved kitchen extension and to install a small rear balcony that will mirror the already approved deck directly below um, our issues were that the uh, floor space index is 0.6 times the area of the lot, and we are simply asking for 0 0.65, so ultimately 0 0.05. Um, the proposed second story deck uh, is a uh, setback of 0.45 meters, um, and uh, supposed to be, and uh, we are proposing a 0 0.158 meter which the existing deck, which has already been approved, is at 0 0.158 meters. So we're literally just mirroring the balcony above the deck that's already been approved by the city. Um, the neighbor to the north on 79 uh, Eaton Avenue uh, basically started construction together uh, with us at the same time. We were fortunately able to um, share excavating equipment and and it worked out great. Uh, the neighbor also had some minor variances. Um, this is 79, of course. Yes, that one there, yes. Um, he was asking for uh, his floor space index was 0 0.60, and he, was ma he made a proposal of 0 0.97. This was approved. Okay, This is our fellow next door. Correct, that's 79. We're to the left there. Uh, which is 77, that's us, yes. Okay. So um, the alteration will have no impact on the footprint of our design already approved by the city whatsoever. Um, as you can see, the concrete down below at the bottom of 77 Eaton, uh, yes, that's all been created. That's the footprint there. That's uh, already been approved. Um, uh, the committee has previously approved the setback for our existing building permit along the backyard deck, and the proposed second-story balcony is just a mirror of it, as I had mentioned. Um, we are making these minor alterations to our plans to work along with the mass of our neighboring property to the north, so we are not swallowed up by the uh, uh, huge building that uh, has been created next to us, as you can see in the photograph there. That's uh, really put us in, in awe when that went up. So the history is that we commenced our renovation project in April 2019. At the same time, the property at 79 Eaton, their teardown, um, like I say, which worked out best for us because we were able to coordinate uh, the excavation with uh, as little disruption as possible. 
the new three-story duplex to the right was prefabricated off-site and brought in modularly uh, on a crane in June of 2019. It took approximately four days to assemble. We took a little bit longer. We had some underpinning to do. We had some weather conditions, and uh, we were slightly uh, behind um, behind our neighbor. Um, we didn't realize, of course, the magnitude of the building next door to us until it was built. Up until that point, we had only seen the design on paper, and our concerns were the proximity of the building um, and the three-story height overlooking the, the rear-story balcony. That's all been dealt with, of course. However, on day four, the uh, view from our backyard uh, was, and there it is there, um, was a massive three-story wall of two-tone prefab steel. The uh, huge structure is fully in our sight line, looking east from our rear window toward our guard and yard and uh, garden. Uh, we were stunned, of course. Immediately, we realized we had to go back to the drawing board and make some minor alterations to our plans for the second floor to work along with the mass of our neighboring property to the north. Not a problem. The res resolution was to forfeit our vaulted kitchen. Uh, ceiling and to extend the second floor to the fully to the full extent of the kitchen below so that we would not be consumed by the building next door uh, every time we looked out the window yes that's the uh, alteration we had to make there to uh, pull it forward so we weren't consumed by that wall to the north um, and of course we didn't realize it until it was actually built um, thinking optimistically Thinking up. I need you to make your summary now, please. Sure. So in summary, um, the uh, second floor balcony, of course, uh, is a mirror to the deck, like I say. Uh, setback has already been approved the deck. Uh, this altercation affects the second floor only. Had we designed our addition this way at the onset, we would not have wasted time and expense of reapplying to the committee for the adjustment. However, we had no idea of the impact of the building next to us. The footprint of our existing building permit is not changing in order to accommodate this alteration. We're simply adding GFA to our second floor. We also realize that by gaining the extra living area on the second floor, the basement living area wouldn't be as important anymore. As a result, if the committee approves a second floor space, this will allow us to rent out the basement as an apartment for affordable housing. It has its own private entrance exit and just uh, we wouldn't need it to, if we can increase the upstairs. The committee has already approved the extension in the front of the house. This is very important. Front of the house to the. So no, I'm going to have to ask you to. Sorry. Okay. So they've uh, they've approved the, the the front of the house. There, we're willing to give up that front portion of the house of the GFI to extend it in the back there. So we'll give that up if we can get that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Perhaps you could leave that, that drawing up. Um, you could leave up the last drawing. That would be good, yeah. It helps to, uh, to visualize. Yeah, that's good. Unless the app. Very good. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so I'm legal representative for the owners of 75 Eaton. Um, Ted and Bronwyn uh, Gorslin. Um, I actually had not intended. What's your name and address, please? Uh, it's um, mine. Yeah, My yeah yours, please. Yeah. Oh, um, it's one Adelaide Street East, uh, Suite Eight Hundred One. And your name? Uh, Monica Peters. Thank you. Uh, so I had initially come here not with the intention of opposing this application. Um, it was my understanding that a, an agreement had been reached. Uh, between myself and the applicants last night, and I had attended this morning simply to get that agreement, which had been agreed to in writing, signed. Um, when I arrived today, I was informed that they would not uh, consent to a signature. And so, in light of the circumstances, I do think that it would be more appropriate for the actual owners of the property to be here today to make submissions with respect to specifically how this development would affect um, their living space. Um, I am prepared to make some preliminary uh, submissions if, if you don't grant an adjournment, um, but I do think that 
um, that would be appropriate. Um, alternatively, I would be willing to withdraw the opposition um, if the approval was granted with conditions that incorporated the settlement terms previously agreed to. Okay, in terms of what the committee has the authority to do and what we're considering, we are considering an application before us that involves two variances and um, which was distributed and no, people notified and so Right. If there is a side agreement of some kind between your client, which is 75 Eaton? Right. Okay. And, and the applicant, that is outside the purview of, of the committee. We won't reflect that in our decision. Um, we won't make reference to it. That's, uh, that's a side, a side uh, matter completely. Um, I, th I think as, as far as the committee is concerned, we have the information we need here to look at this. Um, and so I think you should but make submissions. You, unfortunately, you don't have the benefit of the owners being here. And Excuse they me. would have been here but for thinking there was an agreement. Pardon me. Pardon me. As the owner's representative, I will ask you to, sure. to address these two variances. That's all you've got to address. The 0 0.05 and the, uh, the balcony setback. Because those are the only two things that the committee is looking at. If you could, you could explain how the neighbors feel those two elements impact their property, we'd like to hear that. Sure. So there's three points of opposition. Uh, the first is simply the inaccuracies in the materials that were submitted and that are being considered by the committee. Um, as you will see in my sub submissions, uh, I attached a survey, and the survey um, and plans provided by the applicant are not the same as the survey that we have. And, and so it calls into question um, the veracity of the plans that the committee is looking at and, and asking to approve. So that's my first point of opposition. Um, as well as with respect to references to um, the neighbor on the north side, or sorry, south side being an apartment building that also is inaccurate it's not an apartment building to the best of my understanding it's a duplex um, the second point of opposition is the adverse impact that it would have that the variance would have on the neighboring lands um, I submit to to the committee that in addition to the regular considerations with respect to the impact on sunlight, privacy, views, spacing, openness, mass ball, kite, um, there also needs to be a consideration that there that the submissions are that this neighbor is not respecting boundary lines and they are now seeking a variance to further to further encroach on those boundary lines. And so these bylaws are in place specifically to create buffer space. And so where you have a neighbor that isn't respecting boundary lines, that buffer space is needed more than ever. Um, the third point of opposition um, is that it's not desirable from a public interest perspective. Um, and this relates um, to the committee's uh, requirement to take into account the history um, of the applicant's construction and development. And so construction has been going on in this property um, for several months and has caused severe damage to their neighbors. Uh, with respect to the cement being torn up uh, between the two properties, the parenting being torn up, um, the foundation um, be, being um, impacted. And unfortunately, um, my clients haven't even been able to look at the foundation uh, because they can't obtain access to it. Um, so based on the history alone, um, it would be against the committee's mandate to grant further um, impacts that would greater aggravate uh, an existing situation. For that. 
Let me ask you, is your, is your client at 75 Eaton to the north or the south of the subject property? It's to the south. To the me. south. It's to the south. The north or south? South. South, okay. South. It's to the south. I'll, I'll just comment to you that the side yard setback that is being um, requested is on the north side. It's not on your neighbor's side. Right, but it's still a public interest. But that's fair enough. Okay. All right, then. And, and the, the setback to the backyard is impacting directly to the, to the south side, correct? No, the, what, what's being so there, there's, two, there's two variances being two, requested. Two variances here. One to the back, one to the side. Yes, 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 that's correct. There are two variances, one that extends the rear second floor and one that... Uh, involves the north side side yard set. Right. I, I think ultimately a variance request is a privilege, not a right. And so where you have individuals who aren't respecting um, their neighborhood, whether the variance affects directly or not, it still negates their ability to apply Thank you. to it. Thank you. Okay, then at this point I will ask the applicant to... Uh, Return to the podium, and the applicant will have five minutes to rebut specifically concerns raised by the, the speaker, the one that um, uh, I'm most concerned about is the one that relates to the variance here, the second variance, which is the, uh, the side yard setback. Um, in terms of the survey, there is a survey included in the, in the package, which is the one that is the essence of this application. But I'll, I'll ask the applicant's comments on, these, on these, uh, these issues, the survey and the side yard setback. Uh, okay. So the um, survey is completely... Uh, there's nothing wrong with our survey whatsoever. Um, our survey was uh, submitted originally with the package uh, back in 2018. There was no issues with it. Uh, it was approved. Um, we would actually have the entire residence built at this point in time if, uh, again, we didn't, uh, we weren't dealing with the mass to the property of the north and went back to the table to redesign. Okay. Um, the property has been in uh, Lynn's name for over 100 years, her family for over 100 years. Um, a lot of things around it are grandfathered. Um, this particular survey was done by a fellow named Mucklestone, which is legendary in the uh, survey world. Anybody who is a surveyor would know the name Mucklestone. Um, this really is nothing more than a neighbor dispute. Uh, as far as the uh, setbacks concerned, um, on the south side here, we have four feet between our property. Our south wall and their north wall is four feet. doesn't affect them whatsoever, what's going on on the north side. And that particular individual with the huge mass, which is a friend of ours now actually, um, he has no problem with us mirroring the deck that's already been approved down below. It's that simple. Okay. How much space will there be between the two houses? Which one? Between your house and 79. There is 22 inches, I believe it was. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. 22 inches, yes. So, um, nonetheless, as far as council here is concerned, I uh, received a phone call yesterday pertaining to the letter that was submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. Okay. Uh, it simply goes on to say that the data survey, these encroachments are not uh, evidenced in the plans. Uh, no further action ought to be permitted with the current infringements until the current infringements are rectified, right? These are the current infringements. Removal of the encroachments, including the fence, shed, and shrubbery, and repair of fence along the property line. Immediate continued access to the side of their home, which will require either removal of the lock gate or providing the owners with their own key. So, council is actually suggesting that we give our neighbors a key to our property, to our back. Let's not let's not spend too much time on items that are beyond the jurisdiction of the committee. Of course, we are dealing with two two minor variances, and uh, that's what all that we have to authority to either approve or to refuse. Totally understand, sir. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of this applicant or my colleagues? No, thanks. Wholesome discussion. Okay. Um, let's take this then into committee now. And uh, I'll ask you to, your thoughts on the application. Um, my thoughts are these the variances before us today are very minor. And um, Others. They would also have the opportunity at some point to also really redevelop if they so saw fit. Um, but um, I think these variances that we're looking at are very minor from what's already been approved. It's a very Oh, but that mirrors my views too. Um, these are minor, and uh, they do. I, I can see the uh, rationale behind these requests in terms of what exists on the site, particularly number seventy-nine. So, that being said, I would look to committee for a motion on the uh, on the application, please. Sir, I so. motion to approve by Mr. Reed. And I will second that. Second by Ms. Larson. All those in favor? The application is approved. Okay. I think that does us. So then, we now have 530 Oakwood. So, 530 Oakwood, applicant for come forward, please. And may I ask those here in interest to come forward and uh, have a seat at the Seats on the uh, on the horseshoe. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Joe Dome, 1101 Steeles Avenue West, agent for the applicant. Thank you very much. All right. On this application, 530 Oakwood, we have before us the following materials. Materials submitted by the applicant, previous Committee of Adjustment decision, we have uh, correspondence from Transportation Services, Traffic Planning and Transportation Services, Permits and Enforcement Parking. And there's a staff report from Permits and, Informant and Enforcement Parking, Transportation Services. In opposition, there is correspondence from Novelin and Robert Dial at 532 Oakwood received January 16, 2020. Um, now, if I may, are there persons here in interest? May I ask you please to come right up to the, have a seat at the uh, horseshoe, please. And is there anyone else? I guess not. But that, that chair is fine, yes, please. Right there. Okay. Okay then, um, and you will have five minutes to make your presentation following the applicants. So. I'll ask the applicant now to, uh, to carry on with your presentation. Hi. Um, so in regards to the, the only variance that's listed regarding the parking, that's um, required six spaces. Um, the, um, as it mentioned in the staff report, um, we've actually applied for two commercial boulevard parking spots. Um, and those, uh, just as an update to that, um, it seems to be going very well and, and within the next two weeks or so it should be approved. And so, uh, so we're happy to go along with the, um, the staff report recommendations. And um, uh, basically, um, as far as the, the neighbor's concerns regarding the, the fence, um, it doesn't, uh, it's not, uh, what we're asking for is not um, impacting that. Okay, um, 
we're not sure what the neighbor is asking in terms of the fence. Do you want to address that now, or do you want to wait until? Um, I can I can um, let the neighbor um, address we'll let the neighbor this. Bring that up. Okay. Yeah. And and man, one, one question the committee had looking at the plans we saw. We looked at the plans and we looked at the purpose of the application and we wondered if there was a small correction needed. There are mm -hmm. two existing second story suites on the in the yes. property. Yes. Uh, no, no, sorry, there's one existing secondary suite and then um, a proposed uh, secondary suite in the basement. Okay. Well, in that case, um, the second the second story does not have two separate suites. Uh, sorry? The, the, the second story does not currently have two separate suites. No, no, the second story is, is um, a suite, and then a second suite is being proposed today. The plans for the second story show um, a, a wall down the middle, two kitchens, two washrooms. Um, it's... Perhaps you could put up your copy of the second story yeah. plan, please. Okay, so it's yeah. So as far as I'm aware, it wasn't being used as a secondary suite. Um, I'm I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not quite sure of the the current usage. All right. So you you, you have have you you can't comment on I, there I, are two suites there. It's and the plans have to speak for themselves, and it shows two suites. It's right. Just, it shows that you can't go from one to the other, and that there are two sanitary facilities and two mm -hmm. kitchens. So that being the case, um, committee had thought it proper to uh, edit the language of the purpose to read. follows to alter the existing two-story mixed-use building with two, two existing second-story secondary suites in ground floor commercial by adding a third suite in the basement. Rear basement walkout will be provided. Okay. Um, yeah, if that's indeed the, the case, I, that's not a discussion that um, I've had with the owner as far as how many um, existing um, units. I was under the impression there was uh, one. If there are two and we would like to change the, the language as long as it doesn't um, impact. Uh, the committee is simply going by the plan submitted as part of the application. Yes. Okay, then. So uh, any questions of this, uh, this uh, applicant committee members? Yeah, Oh, I do have one other question. Um, there, there looks like there's parking out back, right? So that's on a parking for another lot. Like so the number of parking stalls we noticed. So that um, parking that was approved in um, 2012 uh, for one space. Uh, or it was it was uh, legalized uh, for one space, and it has to be uh, re-legalized now. And the recommendation was to um, uh, to get it legalized for two commercial boulevard spaces. Okay, I think we're confused because <clears throat> it looked like um, the rear of the property had several, like maybe five, seven, seven. I th I, I think you and I'm not sure. Maybe it's on the next property over, but from the from Street View, anyway, it appeared that there are a whole bunch. And with signs, and it looked relatively formalized. Yeah, I, I think it was about four or five. I think you can when you come up, yeah. Okay. Okay, then, applicant, um, have a seat, please. We'll hear now from the person to speak in interest. If you'd come forward, please, to the podium. Good afternoon. I'm Novlin Dale. 
and I'm the owner of 532 Oakwood. House next door. Yes. Thank you. Um, I know you might not be able to help me with this issue, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, about two or three years ago, I 34 erected a met. Basically, it's a strip town of the whole Oakwood area. Okay, the front of the building sits right on the city line, except for the sidewalk. There's an alley in the back. An alley in the back, and your parking space is accessed from the back. 532, 530 borders onto Eleanor Avenue. So the parking that you're referring to, he has to access it from Eleanor Avenue, not the alley on Oakwood. Right. And they had about four parking spaces there. Um, originally it was more than four, but the original owner applied for a permit and had an extension to the back, both first and second floor. Okay. So they used up part of their parking space for that. Okay. Um, okay. About two or three years ago, five, 534 applied for a permit to extend their back the same way 530 did. And five, not 534, 536. 534, 534 allowed 536 to use his backyard and my backyard during the construction. But then 534 and 536 had a squabble about line, property line, after the construction was finished. 534 went up and put up a fence line, taking it straight down the property line to the alley. That line you're looking at the back there, that's the alley right there. And 534 took the fence line way down to the, the alley line, right on the city line. By then, 530 had already put up a fence, which was, since the new owner took over, which was a board fence. So by, I'm now being boxed in, so I said, something is wrong here because I cannot get into my parking space. So I went and measured and found that 530 had taken over about eight inches of my property. 534 was okay, but because he had taken the fence straight to the property line and right behind the, the alley there, is the side of the house that is an Eleanor. So for me to come out, I'd have to hit Ellen, the house on Eleanor. So I couldn't go it into my apartment. I contacted his client to let her know that she had used up some of my property. Her response was, there was a fence there before. I said, yes, there was a fence there before, but it was a metal fence. And that would have only taken about three inches off. But you put up a board fence, which is now about six inches, and you also came in on my side. So you need to remove it so I could get in. She did not respond, so I went to North York City Hall. Um, North York City Hall um, advised me that by 34, I have a legal right to put up their fence because there is no bylaw stopping them from taking it to the city line because it wasn't really, it's not really a front fence, it's a back fence. And there is no bylaw stopping them. So what I need to do is to contact my counselor so that the counselor could introduce that motion into committee to change the bylaw so that the fence would not go all the way to the city line. So anyway, the, the counselor contacted 530, 534 and 
We got along pretty good. He's an older Italian man. And he took out one about this much of the fence that was the city line so I could go in because I couldn't go in at all. I, I could not. I, I drive a truck and I just couldn't get into my car. Okay, 5.30, I sent them a letter. I talked to her on the phone, and I also sent her a letter, and she didn't respond to the letter. Now, even though 5.34 has appeased me a bit, I still cannot get a truck in there. I can get a car, and I have about three parking spots, but they are one behind the other. I still can't get in there. And if I wanted to do the same thing as 5.34, no truck could go in there to, to do that. I'll ask you to summarize, please. Yes. Okay. In a gist, um, as I said, I know I cannot stop it, but I would like some advice from you as to what to do because um, my property would end up being of no value. The only thing I was hoping for is that the city will rezone the whole block and make it um, high-rise high rather than two stories. Well, I should explain to you that the Committee of Adjustment ha has a mandate, and, um, and that's all we are authorized to do. So to give you advice on, on that issue that relates to um, 534 is, is out, out, totally outside of our yeah, I'm our not mandate. addressing 534 at this point because they removed one block. I'm addressing 530 because she now has eight inches of my property, which she re refused to take the fence off, you see. And for her to get a permit to put, that means she'll be using up my property to put her walk-in basement. Yes, I, I, I have to, I understand your concern. And I think you, you say you've already been in touch with your city councilor and you've been in touch with the city. And those are the right things to do, and they may need to be followed up upon. The, the authority that this committee has is to um, hear the application for two specific um, minor variance requests and to, to determine if they should be approved or, or, uh, or refused. So, um, without, without giving advice, I think, I mean, the one thing that is here as part of this application is the survey. And it shows on the survey where the property line is between your property and 530. And it also shows where the fence is. So it, it shows in this drawing that the fence is partially on your property. And so that's, that's something you have that you can then maybe have further discussions with 530 about. Or I don't know, Sylvia, if you'd have recommendations for a department that, that this woman could speak to. Their deal with fences, right? Yeah. Okay. Did, did you get that? Yeah, I'd go back to the counselor with. Well, the counselor this. did what she could. She's, she contacted Fire 34, and that's her work why he took down the fence, the, the, a part of the fence. So at least I could get a car in, but I can't get a truck in. See, sometimes I park, I go there, I have a truck, I park in their property, and I end up getting a parking ticket because my truck cannot negotiate the corner to get in. And I informed her that she, her fence is on my property. She did not inform me when she put up the fence. If she did, I would have gone. It's a rental property, and I don't live there, okay? So when I went, I saw this fence put up. So I had to go to the restaurant and ask who owned the property. And then they gave me her number and I called her to let her know that she's infringing on my property. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll ask the applicant to return to the podium, please. Um, to address uh, those concerns, um, I, I know it was mentioned that that the uh, what we're requesting would affect would be built partially on our property in regards to the basement unit, but that's um, not the case. Um, if you look at the site plan, and um, it's 
as you can see, um, the the area that um, we're talking about with the fence, where it crosses over um, slightly by a few inches into um, her property, occurs uh, basically right around where it's listed as the parking space. It's at the very uh, tip of the parking space, but it, the parking space is not um, affected by um, this issue. Um, and this issue, um, the owner has um, has definitely expressed a, a willingness to um, to have those conversations and and get this resolved. It's a little it's a little hard to see. It's a very small thing. Do you want me to point to to the? But uh, before that aspect, um, uh, before that, um, the fence is um, entirely within the, uh, the property. Thank you very much. Any questions of the applicant? Sorry, no uppers, please. We know the applicant has the floor. And the process is that the applicant speaks. Then those in interest speak. The applicant gets to rebut. And if there are no questions now of the applicant, then we're going to take the um, application into committee. We're going to discuss it and, uh, and render a vote on it. Okay. Panel members, your thoughts on this application, Peter? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's quite straightforward. I think the fence issue and the parking issue are separate issue that we can't really address right here um, and that the works that would happen as part of this are, are contained away from the neighborhood property. Uh, so I, I feel comfortable approving this, putting forward a motion to approve this subject to the uh, Boulevard parking condition from right away, ma'am. Carson, any thoughts on that? Agree. Um, transport. I see. Note that transportation services does not object to the application on condition, um, and I would support the application. And um, yeah, then could, could you make formal application, formal motion, then please, Mr. Sir, I move a motion for approval of this application subject to the Boulevard parking condition. Right of Motion by Mr. Reed. Is there a second? Second that. Second, Ms. Larson. All in favor? The application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, today's agenda. So all that we need now is a motion to uh, terminate the hearing. Motion by Ms. Larson. <laughs> to terminate the hearing. To terminate the hearing. And the time is... The time is one or oh, two oh two oh nine. Two oh nine. Second on that motion? Yeah, I'll second that. All in favor? <laughs> the hearing is adjourned. Hearing is terminated. Well done.